Hi, my name is Sean Sadler, and I want to give you a quick demonstration of an Adobe Lifecycle application I built for Max 2008. This is a pet store application which I built for three reasons. One, I wanted to illustrate a standard enterprise app being built on top of Lifecycle ES. Two, I wanted to show some of the value add that Lifecycle brings to the table for enterprise application development through its support of process-oriented application concepts. And three, I also happen to be a pet owner. I have two dogs, both of which have cost me big over time. So it gives me just a little bit of pleasure to build an app where I can sell rather than purchase pets. So with that, let's actually take a look at the pet store application. We'll log in using the sample login provided with the Lifecycle ES for Alex Pink. Once we log in, we see three categories within the pet store, cats, dogs, and reptiles. We can click on any animal to see its detail and its image. Jose is my favorite, the Chihuahua. But now we'll jump over and actually go sell a pet, specifically my dog Thor. He's eight years old, a dog, and an English Bulldog. And it's an expensive breed, but we'll sell them for 10 bucks. And he goes to the Briar Cliff vet. That's in Decatur, Georgia. Let's go find the image for Thor. There we go. Handsome fellow. Now before actually submitting this off, let's take a look at the next diagram so we can take a look at what's going to happen next. This is where we really diverge from the typical data-oriented enterprise application. Rather than take that pen information which I entered and write it directly to the database, we're instead going to off a long-lived process, a pet verification process. And as we'll see later on, this process does several things. First, at step one, it transforms the pet object that we are submitting from the Pet Store error application into XML. This is necessary that, so that we can take the XML data, merge it with an XFA form template built in Adobe Designer to create a data capture experience for Tony Blue, the Pet Store clerk. And as we'll see, Tony Blue will call my vet, verify Thor's information, and assign a health ranking to Thor. That's all part of step two. After you click submit, we go to step three, where the data that Tony entered is merged with the data I entered. And finally, in step four, we write that data, the pet object, back to the database. And it's at that point that Thor becomes available in the pet store for purchase. So let's go ahead and walk through this, and we'll do that by first opening up the workspace application which Tony Blue will be using. So we'll log in as Tony Blue. And we see that <clears throat> Tony Blue has no work items. So life is pretty good right now for Tony Blue. But hopefully we can change that. Because right now we have Thor ready to be sold. So we'll click Submit. We should expect to see a work item coming to Tony Blue's queue. And there we go. So we can click on this to bring up the data capture experience being the form. So we see the information which I just entered, along with the vet information. Now, me being Tony Blue at this point, we can go ahead and call the vet, say that I have validated the information from Thor. My contact was Dr. Seuss. And Dr. Seuss said that Thor is not too healthy. So we'll give Thor a health ranking of 2, which is not so good. And press complete. 
So as we saw in the process, we now expect that data to be merged with the initial pet object which I submitted, and for that to be written to the database. So if we come back to the pet store app, we should go to the dogs, and I should see Thor pop up here, and there he goes. English Bulldog, health ranking of two, lover now a fighter. Now before we jump out of this, let's actually go take a look at another tool. This is called Workbench. Our Workbench is a design time tooling that comes with Lifecycle DS for building processes. And specifically, we want to look at the pet verification process. As we mentioned before, it's a four-step process, so it's fairly simple. If you look down here, we have three variables. We have one of those marked as input. That's a pet object, so it's a variable of type pet we expect to be sent into the system, into the process. Click on the first step. We can see that's where we're doing the transformation of the pet object that's coming in, taking its properties and setting it onto an XML variable called pet XML. At this time point, we're actually creating an XML variable at runtime, instantiating it. And we're using that data in the second step to merge it with the form template and then send that data capture experience to Tony Blue. So if we take a look at here in the initial user selection, we're assigning the work to Tony Blue specifically. This can alternatively be assigned to a group. And then in that third step, we're then taking the data that's sent back to us from Tony Blue and merging it back onto the pet object before ultimately running it to the database through this pet service on the create item operation. Now it's, it's uh, important to note that this is actually a custom component that was delivered by the pet store. And that this um, custom component has an integration to lifecycle data management services. So not only is it pushing that pet object to the database, but it's also pushing it to any clients that are interested in that data. And finally, we'll also walk through another feature within Workbench, which is record and playback. So we can actually go ahead and play a recording of the process which we just invoked and inspect the data as it goes through the process. So on step one, we can take a look at the pet that was actually submitted. We see Thor, age eight, English Bulldog. There's a base 64 encoding of the image. If we jump a few more steps, we can see actually at this point that we also have a medical health ranking set of two. Anyway, that concludes my demonstration of the Petstore application for Lifecycle ES. Thank you very much for your time.